Welcome to the review of the iPhone 15 Pro after 6 months of use. It's been like 6 months since the iPhone 15 Pro has been launched and in 6 months time, the 15 Pro will be replaced by the next Pro series iPhone. And this blue titanium 128GB iPhone 15 Pro has been my main phone for the past 6 months. And to me, when we use a product for that long, that's when we really understand the proper pros and cons of the product. Because even though this is a great phone, it's surely not a perfect phone. Because during this usage period, even though I've enjoyed using the 15 Pro, there has surely been some hiccups. And to point the main issue I've faced with the 15 Pro, well, we have to focus on the cameras because that's where I've faced a major issue. Now, I'm not talking about the camera performance in terms of photo and video quality. And in fact, this camera package is surely one of the best in a phone right now. I just love the photos and videos that the 15 Pro captured because it's so reliable and convenient such that I've been confident in using the main 48 megapixel camera of this phone for taking photos at any time and at any setting. And I also love the raw photos and video capturing capability of this phone. I'm not saying it's a DSLR replacement, but then with the 15 Pro, you can surely use it for your creativity purpose. Now the ultra wide and telephoto cameras, well, they're good. And I actually use the macro mode option from the telephoto camera a lot, but then about the 3X setting, well, I usually did prefer to stick with the 2X setting over it because the 2X option was much more sharper in tougher situations because it's like cropping into the main 48 megapixel camera shot. And if you ask me whether I missed the 5X telephoto option in the Pro phone, well, I did miss it because it has been set just for the Pro Max variant and that has been a miss, but again, this is what it is. And also about the 12 megapixel front camera, it's a solid one too. So from what I'm saying, you should know by now that it's not that the camera performance of the 15 Pro is bad, but it's about a bug that happened with me while using the 15 Pro. And the bug is that the camera didn't respond. And actually this bug happened three times over this six months period. So what it is is that when I open the camera, the figure I'm getting is just a plain black screen with the setting and shutter button and everything in their respective places. And when I try to click the shutter button, nothing happens. And when I saw this bug, even if I close and open the camera app, it still did the same thing. And the only way I could get it fixed is by doing a force restart. Now, as I said, it happened three times and it was in different iOS versions and all of them were stable public versions. And it's an annoying bug because I did miss a few shots. But that said, other than this bug, my experience has been pretty good if we ignore the initial slight heating issues that the A17 Pro chipset had. And actually talking about the A17 Pro chipset, well, it's a powerful chipset for sure because the performance of this phone has been excellent. And I'm not talking about casual or moderate usage pattern, but instead, even if I'm doing intense gaming or photo editing or multitasking, they all just run very smoothly. Now under intense load, you can feel the phone getting a bit hot, but to be frank, it's not a bothering thing. And I've noticed this in almost every phones. And if in case you're wondering whether the 120 GB variant was giving any storage issues, well, I didn't face any such issues because I do transfer photos and videos pretty much every month to my SSD. And talking about the SSD, well, now you can connect one directly to the phone because the port is USB-C. And even though initially I didn't consider this change to be a massive one, well, after this long, I love this port change because it's so convenient. And like this change, another thing that got updated with this phone over the previous version is the design refinement. Now, when I say design refinement, what I mean is that they smoothened the edges of the phone. And also since they updated the frame of the phone to titanium over stainless steel, the phone got a bit lighter. And on a day-to-day -day usage basis, both these things has drastically improved the in-hand comfort. Now to me, the shiny stainless steel surely looked a bit more premium, but then this design is great too. And actually the design has aged pretty well. My unit is the blue titanium color and the PVD coating has held up fine. There is no major scuff for chipping and I've been using this phone 90% of the time without a case. So right now I can confidently say that even if you get a darker toned 15 Pro series, it will age well if you're not very careless. And about the glass durability, well the matte back glass hasn't picked up any scratches and the camera lenses are also looking pristine. And about the front glass, I've used a tempered glass screen guard so I can't comment about its aging. But here, this display bezel is so nice. I mean, it's very thin and even, 
and that makes it look kind of premium. And actually the display quality is also top notch. This is a 6.1 inch OLED panel with 120 Hz refresh rate. And what I can say is that this is one of the best displays in a phone. The colors are sharp and accurate and the viewing angles are great too. And let it be a darker scenario or a very bright outdoor scenario, you won't have any issues with the display's brightness because it can go sufficiently dim and way too bright. Now the dynamic element is fine. With the few apps that shows the live activity, it's a handy little space. And here the face ID sensor in the dynamic element, it just works as expected. But then one thing that didn't work as planned, at least to me, is the action button. It was also a hyped feature for the 15 Pro because it's a programmable button and you can literally program it to do any task with the help of shortcuts, but I haven't used it much. I've initially set it to open the camera, but then later I tried to use it to open a quick note then I switched to use it as a mute on mute toggle and now I'm again back at using it for opening the camera. And to be frank, I never use this button and mainly it's because of its placement. It's way too high and I always forget about it. But then one thing that I never forget about is to charge this phone at least once a day because the battery backup is just fine. Now based on my user experience, I can see that if you're using it in a moderate usage style where you click a few photos, then spend some time on social media apps, read news or go through mails and do a bit of casual gaming and watch videos, well then you can get a day's use with a fully charged battery and the screen on time should be approximately in the four hour range. But if you are a heavy user and you follow a very heavy usage pattern, well then you can drain this phone's fully charged battery in a couple of hours. So for example, if you play a graphic AV game or extensively use the camera, well then this battery just drains at a very high pace. Now this is something to be expected because the battery capacity is just 3274 mAh, which means it's not a massive battery. And about the charging, well, the phone charges fairly quickly if you use the USB-C wired charging method. And about wireless charging, the phone supports T2 wireless charging. And here, the 15W MagSafe charging is supported too. Now, an important thing to note here with the battery side is that this phone does show the cycle count for the battery. And also, the battery health hasn't been dropping very quickly and with iOS 17.4, Apple has stated that the battery is rated to maintain 80% of the battery capacity for 1000 charge cycles, which is like double of what the 14 Pro had. So that's like a plus in the battery side. So overall, this is a well-packed phone. Like even the call quality is just great and the speakers sound good. And also, I didn't face any network or connectivity issues with the phone. And by the way, the phone does have IP68 rating too. And after using the 15 Pro for the past six months, I can say that except for the few minor issues, I really like this phone. It overall gives a smooth experience and right now, this is actually one of the best phones to buy. But then, this timing is also something to take into consideration. Because if you're gonna spend the full price to get a 15 Pro right now, well do keep in mind that in six months period, the 16 Pro will launch. So to me, if you're planning to buy a 15 Pro right now, I would highly suggest to check for carrier deals or offers from other stores. I'm sure straight from Apple, you're probably not gonna find a deal, but sometimes you can get a better offer from other stores or through a carrier. And if you find something like that, well, now you know how the 15 Pro is gonna hold up in the long run. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. If so, like is much appreciated. And also, if you don't wanna miss our future contents, a sub to the channel will be nice too. See you again in the next one. Till then, bye.